Hey, do you have a new Apple computer or maybe you've been using Apple computers for a while and you're still wondering why when you use Finder, it's so many things on there that you don't actually need and there's information that's missing that you're trying to find. Well, guess what? In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the optimized settings that I use and it's gonna start right now. <laughs> I think my voice went up three, <laughs> three octaves on that one. <laughs> okay, whatever. Hey everybody, my name is Sean Seymour. I own a photography studio in Sacramento, California. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what settings I use in Finder as a photographer so that I can find things very quickly. Now, one of the reasons that I'm sitting here in my office space doing this is because basically California is on fire and for all of those in the Midwest and back East, I apologize ahead of time for all of the smoke. All joking aside, this is no fun. The air quality is ugly. Let's jump on the computer. I'm gonna go through the view settings first and then I'll show you the preferences at least if you don't want to use the same settings that I use, you know where to find them in your computer now. So when you first get your Mac, you're probably going to end up with some defaults. Personally, I find those defaults next to worthless. They're pretty much worthless. So it might look something like this, where you have large icons, and you probably won't have these green check marks here. This is just something that Dropbox does, letting me know that they've synchronized everything. But let's jump up here to the view settings. And what I want you to do is take a look at this finder window right now. By the way, you can open this by going down to your dock. And if you haven't seen my video about how to organize and set your dock preferences, Take a look at my video right up here because it's pretty cool and you'll be able to make your dock work really well for you. But in order to open this finder window, just go down to your dock and click on finder. Then you'll have a window that opens like this. Let's go to view in finder. Now you'll notice that we have a bunch of options here. So what options do you pick and what do they actually look like? The first thing I want you to do is to scroll down and select as columns. Then the next thing I want you to do is make sure that use groups is checked and then group by kind. So all I did right there is I changed the view to show columns and then I told it to sort by kind. And the reason I do that is when I sort by kind, file folders show up at the top and then it goes through all of the files inside of the folder you're in. So you can see that images is at the top along with shoot proof tutorial, and then it starts in on the files. It'll start with documents, images, movies, PDFs, and so on. Then I can navigate, navigate, navigate to the file that I want. I find this to be very quick and easy to use. Let's continue. Go ahead and make sure that you show preview. Go ahead and turn on your toolbar. Go ahead and show tab bar? No, <laughs> I do not show the tab bar or the tabs. And the reason why is because I don't use tabs. I find that in this view, I really don't need tabs. And I'm gonna show you in a few minutes how to copy and paste. I'm very visual, so I like to see things copy and paste visually rather than be in tabs. Here's my explanation for tabs. If I turn that on, you'll notice that it takes away screen real estate at the top here. I turn the tabs off. So hide the tab bar and you notice that your screen gets a little bit bigger. One of the main reasons that you want to make sure to optimize your settings, both for your dock and for Finder is because when you're on a laptop, and I find this even on a desktop with large screens, the screen space is very valuable real estate. And if you've got the screen space being taken up by a bunch of things that you don't ever use or information that you really don't need to know, then get rid of it. So I turn off the tab bar because I don't use it. Click on show path bar. What you will see right away is that there is a path bar down here at the bottom. This shows the location of the file. So you can see that I'm rolling out here. Each one of these is a folder and you navigate to those folders to get to the eventual file. You'll find that in this view, this will also mimic what I'm seeing up here. So by the time I get to images, which is right here, 
then I'm in portraits, then I'm in models, and then I'm seeing a picture. So portraits, models, and then I'm out here by my files. That's important, especially when you're doing searches and you're trying to locate something and you wanna see where the computer found that file. Okay, let's go back up to the view bar. We are going to show the status bar as well. I'm gonna show you in a minute why this is important, why you need to know what the count of files is in your folder as a photographer, if you're doing any copying and pasting or you're doing any uploading to the internet, it's very helpful to double check yourself with a file count from one folder to the next or from a folder to your online service. So if you notice down here, as soon as I turn that on, this one of 16 selected showed up. That means that I have 16 files right here. Now, if I wanna count how many files uh, within a given range, I can go ahead and say, you know, do from there to there, and you'll see that eight of 16 selected. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, we have our toolbar turned on, but now I'm gonna customize it a little bit more for me. What is this going to change? This is going to change this little bar up here, and you notice as soon as I click on that button, these little guys start wiggling. I don't use tags at all, I find them worthless. So if you want to remove something from your toolbar, you just grab it, pull it into this area, and let go. I'm finding that I create folders all of the time, and rather than click on this little, I think this is a settings thing, and create new folder, I'd like to just bring my new folders into that section right there. I would say 99% of the time, I am always in this column view, but I do like to be able to switch over very quickly to the icon view. I use get info all of the time because I like to take a look at what's going on with the particular folder or with the particular drive that I'm using. And so that is about it. But you can see that you have all of these other things here that you can put into the toolbar if that helps you. So I'm done. Oh, wait, one more thing. You do have the ability to change it from icons to icon and text. So you notice that there's text here explaining what that icon is. Know that if you roll over the icon, it will give you the text anyway, or you can do text only if that's how you do things. I personally, like I said, I'm very visual. I like to just see the icon, and then when I roll over it, it will tell me what it is that I'm doing. Let's go back to the view menu. Go ahead and scroll down to preview options. Now before I do this, I want you to notice that over here in the preview window, I've got some things that are showing. This is metadata that is attached to this particular picture. And you'll notice that it tells me when it was created, when it was modified. As a photographer, what I need most in this area is I need to know the dimensions and I need to know the resolution. So here's the dimensions, 1500 by 1000. The resolution is 72 dots per inch or 72 by 72. However, I don't use tags, right? So if you wanna change what your preview looks like, go to preview options, and right here is where you can turn things on and turn things off. Keep in mind that if your camera is not capturing this information when you're taking the picture, things like exposure time, ISO, and those things are not gonna show over there. Also, if you've exported from another program like Photoshop or whatever, and you don't have it take that information with the file, then it won't show up either. Personally, I wanna turn off this tag because I don't use it and I don't like it. I think it just clutters up my screen. Dimensions, resolution, I don't need to know the color space or the color profile, and that is all that I need on my preview. So why do I use this view? Because I can navigate very quickly to it and I can look at these smaller icons to get a basic understanding of what it is that I'm looking at. But if I really want to look at a bigger picture, I can go ahead and expand out my window and I can get a fairly decent sized picture that gives me a good estimate as to what that picture looks like. This is really helpful when you're sorting through pictures quickly to try and find something to post or you want to, let's say, right click on that picture and I wanna share, airdrop it to my phone for Instagram post or something like that. Super, super fast, plus it gives you a lot of details about the photograph. If for some reason I've exported something for print, I don't necessarily wanna run in here and start sharing that that particular picture to any of my online services. It will <laughs> shut everything down for the most part. Okay, one thing that I almost forgot but is super important is make sure you go to view and show sidebar. 
What that does is it creates a sidebar over here on the left hand side, which is very, very useful for navigating to folders that you go to all of the time. If I wanted to resize these columns, one of the suggestions I have for you is to go ahead and hover over this line and double click. You'll notice that I can't see what these file names are. If I want to change that, I just double click on that line there and it pushes it this way. Personally, I want to see my preview and I hope that Apple changes that, that the preview doesn't become the part that actually gets cut down. But in fact, it's the way that you got here that gets cut down because we already know that. And with the status bar down here, you can tell exactly where you are in this long chain. Another way that you can do this is you can hover over that line and you can right click. You can right size just that column, you can right size all of the columns individually, or you can right size each column equally. I'm going to suggest that you don't right size each column equally because it takes up a huge amount of screen space. And when you're talking about wanting to be efficient with your screen space, getting these columns sized correctly really helps. So I will typically right size, which usually gives me more of a preview window than what I had before. Now you notice when I did that, there's a line here now and my preview is actually just as small as it was. All you have to do is click off of that and click back on that. Your preview will go to the new size. Now let me show you something else. Because I changed out and I'm not using my mouse, but instead I'm using my trackpad, Apple's decided that I no longer need a scroll bar down here. That's a little bit, uh. <laughs> because normally there should be two lines down there. But if you go to your system preferences, and I'll show you how to fix this real quick. Click on general. You notice that it says scroll bars. Oh, magic. When scrolling or always. Mine's gonna be checked to always. Now I have a double line down here that I can actually line myself up with. My columns are a little bit wider so I can hit this line much easier. And my scroll bar is going to be here if there was a need to scroll either direction, but I'm maxed out on my window, so I don't need to. So that's how you turn the scroll bars back on if for some reason you've gotten to a point where your scroll bars are off. Just go to your system preferences in general, click always for your scroll bar, and you're set. Earlier I said to you that I like to look at things visually, and when I copy files from one folder to another folder, I want to see those. So I'm going to show you how I copy files. I usually work left to right and I open two windows so that I can see where I'm copying from and where I'm copying to. In order to do that, what you would do is hold down Command and then N as in November and that will open a second window for you. This is where your sidebar becomes very, very quick for navigating. I simply want to go from this 2020 website over here to this SSD drive. And I want to bring all of these photos, which I can see from my status bar down below that there's 16 photos. I can also see in my status bar over here that there's two photos in my SSD drive. Once I highlight everything, you can use Command A or click at the top, hold down the shift button and click at the bottom. Then what you can do is just simply drag it to the folder where you want it to be copied to. Now, if for some reason you don't want to copy it and you want to actually move it, you can hold down the command button and you'll notice that the plus symbol goes away. There's also a count of how many files I'm actually copying, which should match the count of the files that you have in your status bar. Once I let go, it's going to go ahead and copy those over and you can see that they're copied over, no biggie. And that is how I move files from one folder to another folder or from one folder to an online service when I'm dealing with photographs or video. Sometimes you can get pretty crazy with how many photographs you're uploading to an online service and if you don't know the count, then it's hard to double check yourself and make sure that everything got up to the gallery. Let me go ahead and show you how to change your finder preferences so that it works really well for you. Go up to the top left hand corner under finder, click on that, go to preferences. You'll have a window pop up. It should be in the generals tab. If it's not, go ahead and click on general. Now you notice that I have no hard disks showing up on my desktop. The reason why is because these are not checked. I like to see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the hard disks, external disks, 
If you have CDs or DVDs that you're using, go ahead. If you're using CDs or DVDs, I'm telling you right now, it's time to upgrade. And then connected servers. I really like to know whether or not another server or computer is connected to my computer and or if my computer has automatically connected to someone else's. So I leave this checked. Then this shows what window you want Finder to pop up in when you open Finder. You have a bunch of selections here. I leave it on Recents. Personally, I don't use tags, so I'm gonna skip right past this and go to sidebar. Now you notice over here in my sidebar, I have some things listed. That's what is this area right here. If I want recents to show up on my sidebar, I can check it or uncheck it. Airdrop, same thing. I personally don't use the documents, movies, music, or pictures folders. I actually use Dropbox for all of that stuff. So I have Dropbox in my sidebar. And you're gonna wanna have your, external disks. I use a ton of external disks and if this isn't checked, you notice how my external disk went away. So for navigation purposes, I leave external disks checked and I also leave hard disks checked because I need to be able to get to my root directory on my hard disk sometimes and that's the easiest way to do it. You probably will have recent tags checked that's gonna show up over here, and like I said, I just don't use them, so I uncheck it. Again, connected servers, you're gonna wanna know when someone else's computer or you're connected to someone else's computer, and this is the best way to do it. Pop open your laptop in an airport, and you will see that <laughs> populate pretty darn quick. Okay, let's go over to advanced. Show all file name extensions. I don't really need that because by default, it's already showing it. Yes, leave both uh, or I'm sorry, leave all three of these checked. You definitely want to know before you change an extension and possibly lose a file somewhere because you're no longer calling it an image file, iCloud Drive, and then definitely before you empty the trash, you want to know that. For that reason, I purposefully do not remove items from the trash after 30 days. I actually use my trash sometimes to recover files that I've accidentally deleted. Now, down at the bottom here, Search this Mac. This is where having your path turned on is very, very helpful. By default, you're gonna have search this Mac. So let's say that I wanna go to hmm, Dropbox and I wanna search for a portrait of myself, which amply named Sean Portrait. You notice that what it's done is it's given me everything with the name of Sean and everything with the name of Portrait. If I scroll down, I have a ton of stuff. Every single email by Sean, every single image by Sean, every PDF by Sean, Excel spreadsheet by Sean, Word doc, and so on. It's overwhelming, right? You're never gonna find anything in any of that. Don't pay attention to the Sean's portraits happen to just pop right away up to the top. That's not fair. Let's close that out. Let's go ahead and say, search the current folder. So rather than searching everything on my Mac, I'm just gonna search Dropbox. Now look at how many files I have. That's it. Oh, there you go, that's a good one. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, let's get that out of there. This is getting worse by the second here. There we go. <laughs> okay, so there's a portrait and I only have 43 files down here to look through rather than 4,000, which is what my count was before. So go ahead and when performing a search, search the current folder if that's what you're comfortable with. Otherwise, it's gonna search everything on your Mac, including your emails, and that's where I find it being overwhelming is when it's searching emails. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful and I hope knowing where those settings are helps you customize Finder to work the best for you. I gave you the settings that work best for me, but hey, if that works for you, great. If not, at least you know where to find the settings and change those so that they work well for you. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button down below. Also, you can subscribe to my channel for more of this kind of content. If you want a notification, punch that bell notification down below. And until I see you on the next video, keep it simple. <laughs> Please don't ever let me do that operatic vibrato. Ah, it's not, it doesn't work for me. I shouldn't be doing it. What am I doing? <laughs> Stop recording, okay? Stop.
Hey, keep it simple, my friend. Okay, I'm over it. <laughs>